Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony! That's Cliff! Come on, it's Monday night in Austin, Texas. You guys can make more fucking noise than that. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do this shit. How about a hand for the band, everybody? Come on. That's the goddamn screwball peanut butter whiskey band. Sounding goddamn good tonight. It's the great Matt Muling on guitar, everybody. That is Michael Gonzalez on the drums. And my friend D Madness on the bass guitar. Great red bands here. Very exciting stuff. This is another episode of Kill Tony live in Austin, Texas, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, the two best strip clubs in the world that just so happen to be here in Austin. Fun stuff. Good looking audience we have tonight out here. Bunch of fucking scramblers coming in. I like it like this. Fun week. Let's do this shit. Before we start tonight's episode, here's a little bit more about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you right now. There are some things in life that I like to pick out myself so that I know I've got the one that's best for me, like a cut of steak or a mattress or a prop gun. What if you could do the same thing for hiring? Choose your ideal candidate before they even apply? That's where ZipRecruiter's Invite to Apply comes in. It gives you as the hiring manager, the power to pick your favorites from top candidates. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. How does Invite to Apply work? Well, you post a job on ZipRecruiter. They send you the most qualified people for your job. Then you easily review the candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job. Lauren Webb, SVP of Talent Acquisition of Medulla Health, raves about ZipRecruiter's Invite to Apply. She says, I love that feature because we have a much higher follow-through rate if I invite candidates. It's easy for me and it's easy for them. In fact, according to ZipRecruiter's internal data, jobs where employers use ZipRecruiter's Invite to Apply get, on average, two and a half times more candidates, which helps make for a faster hiring process. Ooh, that's right. See for yourself. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash kill Tony. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? All right. We're all filled up on CM Smokehouse. Thanks to our friend Cade and Yoni over there at uh, CM Smokehouse at Bolden Acres. Ladies and gentlemen... This is so exciting. Uh, Every single week, I have one of the funniest comedians in the world on this show. This week, no different. Uh, You're going to remember that you were here when this man was a guest on this show here tonight. It's Kill Tony's Own, the longest standing regular in the history of the show, the big red machine, William Montgomery, everybody. Oh, shit. Wow. It's the real William Montgomery. Looks a lot like Quentin Tarantino when we had him on a couple months ago, but it is William Lights Out, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Big Red Machine, the Slumdog Billionaire. So nice to be here. As you all heard, I am one of the top comedians in the world, so I was able to get it right in my schedule to be here tonight. Very excited to be here tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've been sipping on uh, canteen and cantina, but you're sober now. You are addicted to raisin bread. Yeah, I'm just eating the shit out of uh, raisin bread now. I've had uh, two loaves since uh, Sunday. There you go. Today's Monday, so you can guess. Yeah, do the math on that one. I'm eating a shit ton of that fucking bread. He's addicted to raisin bread. He's three months sober. He was a heavy drinker, and now he's heavy raisin bread. We're going to have fun tonight. How's your bathrooms with that much raisin bread? Like, is, How's my what? Your bathrooms. Is it just coming like just raisins? Is it thick? 
That's sweet. You called it my bathroom. So I'm just, <laughs> all right. My, yeah. For those of you watching the video, why not subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel? That's what, <laughs> that's what everybody's telling me to say every week yeah. now. Smash hey, that s- like button. Subscribe, boys and girls. We and have a bunch of joke books made here by the great Adrian Cavazos of Bonsai. We're going to be handing those out tonight. Another amazing local artist. The great Ryan J. Ebel drawing tonight's episode from Los Angeles, California. You guys know how this show works. It's a bunch of people that get the opportunity to do stand-up comedy on this stage. I pull their name out. They get 60 seconds uninterrupted to do stand-up comedy. You know their time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else they're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. That's how that works. And then I interview them afterwards and we talk to them about their lives and find out more about them. Are you guys ready to start tonight's fucking show, huh? Let's do it. Your first comedian is a regular on the show, much like William has been for years. We, uh, we have a, always have a maintained a cool group of comedians that write and perform a brand new 60 Seconds every single week. You get to watch them grow. This guy has been opening up for Joe Rogan because of his appearances here on Kill Tony. He is the only regular that was made a regular here in Austin, Texas. The very own Hans Kim, everybody. Here we go. Oh, shit. Here we go. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, My name is Hans Kim, and I'm not a racist. I'm a minority. How could I be impossible? I don't even see race. I only smell it. Especially in the Ubers. I don't know why they call it the Middle East. How do you have a middle of a direction? It's like being like, hey, take a left at the center of right. Maybe that's why they're so mad all the time. Where are we? Um, I think having white pride is a great thing, but a lot of people do it incorrectly. They're always into like the Nazis or the Confederate flag. They're never into building a castle or yodeling. (laughs) That's not white pride, that's racism. You don't have to be white to hate the Jews. I can do that too. (laughs) Thank you. Hans Kim, getting tonight's show started. Always so much fun. Hans Rock in a brand new peacoat we've never seen before. La la. Yes. I don't know many people with a peacoat that live in a van, but you pull it off, my friend. Where'd I gotta, you get this thing? Is this new? This is from my mother. She bought it for me. Um, I've had it for like three years. It hangs in my van. Uh, I get to bust it out. You know, you got to be the first one to bust out the winter gear. You know, All right. you have an advantage. Winter. Fuck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, look, that thing looks like it's been through a lot, huh? Yeah. How many seasons of Squid Games did you play with that jacket on? <laughs> what did you think this was? Have you watched Squid Games? Yes. You love that shit, huh? That's like your American Idol or something like that, isn't it? (laughs) It's like your fucking everything, huh? It's an allegory. It's a great cinematic uh, narrative, you know? It's like, it's got sex. You're a horny dude, Hans. (laughs) How's that been going for you? We found out last week that you broke up with your girlfriend, and here we are tonight, new peacoat. What's What's shaking? You know, um, fun fact, a pea coat was also R. Kelly's favorite kind of coat. Uh, <laughs> during the winter time, that's what he would wear. Sometimes he'd wear a poop coat as well. Uh, depends on what he was into a, that a night. A black one, yeah. Okie dokie, uh, Red Band. Uh, Red Band did a shot of screwball peanut butter whiskey before the show, <laughs> so anything can happen here. I'm uh, back with Paige again. She's visiting. Wait, and... you're back with this broad again? This Every is... week, man. Off yeah. again, on again, like that fucking jacket. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize how weird it looked in the light, but in the dark. <laughs> in the, this is like a in the dark jacket. <laughs> because you could say that about any shitty clothes, huh? <laughs> this is more like uh, dark wear, you know? Uh, this isn't really meant to be seen. It's Poor ugly. Lady. I'm back with Paige again. She's a beautiful lady. She put a finger in my butthole recently. Whoa! Oh, shit! Holy shit! Talk about squid games. <laughs> oh, my God. 
You had a little tentacle in your little duty hole, huh? <laughs> she only got up to the first knuckle. Wow. Um, okay, Red Band, that's enough of those sound effects. First knuckle, and then what yeah. happened? What you, you just went, wow! <laughs> Yeah. What like happened? What, what, did, what did you say when she put her finger? Did she warn you she was going to do it? No, she was just like really enthusiastic about it all night. And I was like, I guess this is happening. You know, I can't. Like, what am I going to be like? No, it's oh, like, shit. you know, if, if she wants it, did my body is Did she get far enough in to like pull a fortune out or anything like that? <laughs> or? No. <laughs> Stop it with the lights. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> When the lighting guy loves a joke, he goes a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> what else is going on in life, Hans? What else have you been up to lately? I'm going on the road. I'm hitting Abilene and Sweetwater, Texas. Wow. Going to get to know the country. Hell yeah. uh, hopefully... Red Man loves Sweetwater. Yeah, I do. <laughs> he calls it Kool-Aid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love that you did the joke about uh, you don't see race, you smell it. I noticed Deep Madness laughed extra hard at that one. Uh, <laughs> could really relate. And white pride. <laughs> Can you smell Asian? <laughs> oh, shit. Yes. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer <laughs> oh, to. Shit. Hell yeah, we smell. Even in Parasite, the South Koreans smell the South Koreans and judge each other. <laughs> Remember that movie? It's not me. I'm just referencing a movie, everybody. Not being racist against Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I would yeah. never... All right. Uh, Hans, but is life good? Are you happy to be yes. back with Paige? Yes. Uh, it's the first day back together, but I just couldn't keep my hands off of her. First day is today, and she's already got one knuckle in on you, dude? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, isn't, isn't that mentally draining, though, going back and forth with the same girl over and over? Every week, you don't know if you're together or back, but you could just be fucking tons of strangers. Yeah. yeah, well, I can't. For those of you that don't know, Hans was Olympic swimming in pussy before settling down <laughs> with us. Uh... Yeah, pussy is, like, so easy for me to get. It's... <laughs> it's uh... Oh, you are the best, dude. You are the very best. Hans is autistic, for those of you that can't tell. Brilliantly hilarious. That doesn't mean he's not autistic. He's super <laughs> autistic, especially off stage. Uh, you do anything so that people understand? You do anything extra autistic recently? Um, autistic. I played Settlers of Catan and won twenty dollars from my bros, who I'll bet uh, I, I beat them in a game of wit and intellect. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, what did I do? I, uh, I went to, uh, like, this show, and I hung out with the guys afterwards, and I was like, dude, what is life all about? You know, like, just asking them questions and stuff is super interesting, because they're, like, normal people, and I'm, like, living in a van doing comedy, so. Right. William, was, you know Hans. You've seen him many times. Uh, what do you think about his uh, performance here? Well, it was interesting you just said that. Hans, you're a self-proclaimed atheist. I think we need to start reading the Bible together or something. Jesus is real. I'm worried about your soul. You have those <laughs> atheist jokes. I'm always cringing when you say them. You need to lay off of that shit. Uh, Please, Hans. <laughs> Wants to well, take you, you know, to church. Would you go to church with William? Yeah, will you start yeah. going to church with me? Could be a podcast. Yeah, we can do a podcast in the, uh, in, the, in the church. I would love that. But I, I just, I know, you know, science is pretty, like, really convincing. Um, this, love... is a man, this is a man that beat his friends just yesterday in a game of intellect and wit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take Hans' advice. Uh, Hans, another amazing performance here. You're an absolute bloody murder. We all love you. Thank you so we'll much. see you next Monday. The great Hans Kim, everybody. All right, now I'm going to pull a name out of the bucket. This is where anything can happen. Perhaps you signed up tonight. Perhaps it's someone's first time. Perhaps, no matter what, it's someone that either really wants to or really regrets signing up for the show. So it's always exciting, and it begins now as I pull out the first name, which is Stephen Hairston. Stephen Hairston is the first comedian tonight on Kill Tony. Here he comes, everyone. 
Come on, everybody. Put your hands together for Stephen Hairston. All right, what's going on, everybody? Hey, so y'all have heard of the saying, drunk is a skunk, right? Man, drunk, skunks are not fucking drunk. You ever smelt a skunk? That motherfucker just took a fat-ass bong rip right in your backyard. That motherfucker smells like weed all the time. And fucking... <laughs> so... What's up with light beer? Like, it weighs just the same amount as every other beer, so I mean, that's just crazy, man. <laughs> so, I, I, I put this bulletproof vest on today just, you know, because I'm DEA and y'all are all going to prison, so, yeah. But... <laughs> uh, I didn't prepare very well today. All right, Stephen Hairston. Here we go. That was 60 seconds from Stephen Hairston. This is a very special look you have, Stephen. You look like Cabbage Patch Kid Rock. <laughs> you look like you should be looking for Brian Laundry right now. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Hey, Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe, he looks like one of Jeff Dunham's puppets come to life. Oh, you Man, fucking got stay. me good, dude. <laughs> Trying to start an insurrection up in here? Why are you dressed like that? Why are you wearing a bulletproof vest? Bull bulletproof oh. vests don't protect against bombing. I don't know if you know that. Uh, that would be a bomb suit. Perhaps a uh, uh, bomb suit. Ladies and gentlemen, would have been more yeah, fitting. ID. I love it though. It's good. <laughs> that was good. What's going on? You trying to hunt with Joe Rogan? What did you think was happening Hell here yeah. tonight? Hell yeah. Why are you yeah. dressed like? Is this your new look? Yeah, you go Joe on a Rogan lot of security. stages like this, or is this a one night only thing? What's going on? No, I just like Warzone and uh, you know playing video games. So I was like, you know, bulletproof vests are cool, so I bought one. <laughs> I got a bulletproof mask, mask too. William, so. what do you think about this guy? I think you better keep playing fucking video games because that was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> the fuck did I just witness? Is that scared you have a fucking gun somewhere or something? Oh, man. Whoa. <laughs> Steven, you've been on this show before, am I correct? Yeah, so I was just on uh, the Joe Rogan and Burt Kreischer and Don Marrero With one. his parents. Remember his parents? Oh, yeah. oh parents it's all coming back to me. So this is like your second time ever on stage, right? Yeah. Wow. Like Look at good, you. Right? You're already trying to be a fucking character over here. He, he's big on TikTok, so I feel like that's some TikTok shit yes. right there. Yes. Wow. I don't ever want those 000. words big on TikTok. Ever spoken in succession on this show Smash ever again. I will never Steve want to know when someone's big on TikTok, by the way. Ever, ever again. That, that is this show's N-word. I'm saying it right now. I don't want to hear it. And anybody that says it, I'm going to beat them up. Sorry, black people. We're just using the N-word. All right, forget it. I made it weird. Um, so, uh, what is your story, dude? Remind us all of uh, what made you want to start stand-up comedy a couple weeks ago. Well, uh, well, this show honestly inspired me a whole lot just because I saw the opportunity that I could Fuck. perform in front of... <laughs> what am I doing? What have I done giving these people hopes and dreams? Good job, Tony. Jesus Christ. This is, this is, the, this is the target audience, everyone. This is it. All right, why is there a monkey, Red Band? We don't need a TikTok monkey. monkey. We don't, no, okay. Stop saying fucking TikTok on this show. It's dead. I hate it. Of course he's big on TikTok. This is how lame TikTok people are. This guy's big on TikTok. Fuck yeah, a bunch of daydreaming idiots watching this guy dance in a circle or something gay like that. What do you do on TikTok? Um, Have you ever thought about killing yourself on it? Because <laughs> I think the video would do good. I think it would, right? I'd probably get taken down. Just avoid but, you know. the bulletproof vest if you uh, shoot yourself. <laughs> Aim for the face. I have said six. It really sucks if you're like, 69 I'm going to do a times. couple shots to the chest and end it all. <laughs> all right. Well, Steven. Uh, what did you think was going to happen here tonight with the act that you prepared for 60 seconds? Honestly, 
Um, you know, I just had written some stuff down in the new Kill Tony book. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you on drugs or anything? Did you do something special today? Did you go date yeah, drinking? Yeah, I smoked a big ass blunt before this. Okay. Well, if anybody wants to join me, I'm doing it after the show, so, you know. No one wants to smoke weed with you at all. I'm DEA. And I'm everybody DEA, so. here basically smokes weed, and they would all smoke weed with each other, and no one wants to smoke with you. That's the vibe in the room right now. I know there's a lot of people watching on the internet. You can't really get a vibe. It might not be translating through the YouTube, uh, but uh, creepy. Yeah, like and follow on Kill Tony. Like and follow. All right, there you he know, goes. God Stephen Harrison, everybody. We're going to pull another name out of the bucket. Wild. We need a uh, metal detector for next week. Braden Paul is the next comedian. Anything can happen here, people. We've had homeless people sign up. We found unbelievable talent. Here he is, Braden Paul. My best friend's baby just died from severe diaper rash. She's going to have him cremated, which I think is kind of ironic because a little bit of baby powder could have saved this whole thing. <laughs> My first job... My first job was at Planned Parenthood in marketing. God, I miss that job. God, I miss that job. The, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm not even a doctor, and I killed it at Planned Parenthood. I, uh, I recently started a genealogy company for inbreds. It's called 23 and We. It's way better than my last idea. Also a genealogy company. It was uh, targeted at uh, people with extra chromosomes. That one was called 47 and going to be dead before you turn 11. Jesus Christ. Uh, Braden Paul, everybody. 60 seconds of stand-up comedy from Braden Paul. Hell yeah, dude. From one school shooter to the next. Look at us just churning them out in here. Just everyone. Could be any one of these fucking mug shots walking up. I love it. Braden, how are you? This is your first time on the show, right? First time ever doing stand-up. Wow! First time ever doing stand-up. That's great. My legs like fucking shaking right Your now. Your legs so are shaking. Absolutely. Forgot all my shit. Absolutely. We could tell. Uh, we know. No, that's good. That's good. You had a good idea. The baby powder joke would have been funny if you're just like, uh, if you cremate a baby, is that how you make baby powder? Like you had, a, you have a good idea, but you, you took you, I think, forty five seconds to get to. Uh, <laughs> mentioning. It was supposed to be a lot quicker. Because diaper rash, <laughs> you can't really die from diaper rash, right? I uh, looked it up and no, you cannot. Right, exactly. And you start your set. Uh, well, uh, if you get an infection. I, I tried to make it plausible, but then I decided I didn't really care that much. But when you say it's your friend's baby, you immediately put this like like feeling out into the audience like, oh God. Yeah, you really... You, you get away from comedy. You know, have you ever thought about maybe opening up your set, just bring a baby and then smash its head on the uh, stage? Because that would get people's attention. If no anyone one has does one, do that. There's no like Gallagher one. smashing babies up here. Love it. What do you do for work? I'm in uh, insurance. I, uh, I'm a quality auditor, so I, uh, I listen uh, to health well, insurance. Well, obviously you're not auditing your set. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. This is your first time doing stand-up. What made you want to start now? Uh, big fan of the show. I write all the time and uh, just figured I'd give it a go, see if it worked. What's Clearly some... didn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, thanks, William. Yeah, I, I really liked it, so... William is my favorite comedian in the All right, entire shut world. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, dude. Jesus Christ. I paid him to say that. <laughs> this fucking guy. 
All right. Uh, tell us something fun or interesting about your life. You come from like a weird family or a weird place. Anything fun that you can do? It is uh, tragically normal, unfortunately. I uh, used to be big into cliff jumping. So uh, into water, not uh, concrete, which I, I wish I did now. I was actually going to recommend you jump off a cliff uh, after seeing your set. I think we all thought the same thing there, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, where, where were, you, were you saying? Cliff jumping and then what? Yeah, I, I used to cliff jump a lot. Um, in uh, Ithaca, biggest cliff was like 90 feet in the like eight feet of water. All right. Times. Well, uh, what else? What else, Brayden? Anything else interesting about you? What's your love life like? I uh, got fiance. So uh, nice. shout out Hannah. Love you. Oh, okay. Wow. That was adorable. Damn. <laughs> you really do do insurance quality auditing. Look at you. You fucking romantic. What does Hannah do? Uh, Hannah waits table. She's going to school now. So. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Is she young? Is this Hannah Montana we're talking about? Uh, what's she going to school for? Uh, occupational therapy. Okay. What do the, what do those people do? It's uh, it's kind of like, from my understanding, like physical therapy, but a little bit different. Fuck yeah! Sounds like you you're really good at listening to her when she's. I go in and out. All right, well, I don't know. Can you imagine, like, being younger and, like, I want to be an auction, whatever that therapist is. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be a brain surgeon. I want to be a heart doctor. I want to be an occupational therapist. He <laughs> <laughs> does right. that. Uh, Braden, you seem like a fit guy. You work out a lot? Fuck no, dude. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally uh, skinny, but I'm starting to get beer gut because I uh, have a kegerator at home, so I'm just pounding uh, beer sweet. all the time. How old are you? 26. So 26, sorry. 26 years old. Absolutely. All right. Well. You remember when kegerators used to be the cool thing in college? You're like, man, one day I'm going to get a kegerator. Nope. <laughs> nope. Red band's old. Remember when the locomotive used to bring the alcohol? Remember in the times, the prohibition? No red band. No one. Really? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. We, uh, of course, there were kegs. Yes, there's still kegs at every. No, bar. no, no. Kegerator, where it's like a tap, where you have like at the bar. That's what a kegerator is. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, never mind. I don't know. All right. Well, what else? What else about you, Braden? I feel like there's something. I feel like there's a question I could ask you that could blow the whole fucking uh, roof off. You seem more boring than anything that I've ever. I got some for you. You're I, literally I, like a, if if a glass of water. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what you're like, dude. Like salt water or something. When I was in college, uh, <laughs> sophomore year. <laughs> you remind me of saline solution. I never told anyone that before. Been doing the show almost nine years. You remind me of saline. Like, thank you. <laughs> okay, what were you gonna say? When I was in college, uh, sophomore year, a girl I uh, sort of knew gave birth uh, to a baby, a live baby, in a fucking dorm shower. So, uh, yeah, shout out Becca and Adam. All right, we don't need their names, Brayden. Wow. Did you get to watch it? Did you see it? I did not see it. Heard secondhand. Wish I could have been there to welcome the little guy into the world. but Wow. At least it wasn't a toilet baby. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, Brayden. Well, fun times. Well, congratulations on getting picked. Here's a little joke book for you, Brayden. Welcome to stand-up comedy. His first time ever on his stage. He had the balls to do it. courage that it takes to sign up for a show like this is all right this is a one word name these are usually pretty good make some noise for strategy strategy, strategy. this should be interesting maybe maybe i'm wrong though strategy a one word name next on kill tony here he is everybody make some noise for strategy everyone So I feel like the toughest part about being in a relationship is staying loyal. And uh, I don't know if you really know about loyalty until you dated a girl who thinks she's down for a threesome. Loyalty is waking up your girlfriend while you're getting blown by the hot Puerto Rican chick that you guys brought home together earlier that night. Waking up your girlfriend to intrude 
on the blowjob that you're getting from a stranger feels like inviting your mother into the room to watch you jerk off a little bit. It's really one of the only things where two heads are not better than one. That's all I got. One minute from strategy. All right, strategy. I, I, welcome to the show. Thank you. I love it. Uh, here, move that mic stand out of the way so that the people on YouTube can see you clearly. You leave that in front of them, they're going to think they're watching a Fred Durst in 1999 try stand-up comedy. You look like that. You're always like this. You're like a more brain-damaged Ron Gronkowski or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. What's your story, strategy? Let's talk about it. Is your first time you're you're new at stand up? Yeah, I mean I've never done stand up. Uh I'm a DJ. Okay. I was gonna say, I, you still haven't done stand up. Uh right. that was that was what we call spoken rap. Uh anytime someone says loyalty three times in a set, it becomes rap by uh default. Did I say it three times? Yeah. Yeah, we're basically loyalty Beetlejuice, dude. Um <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Literally so stupid. But I couldn't stop myself once I started saying it. I like it. that. Hey, come on. Have some loyalty. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, strategy. Why is your name Strategy? It doesn't seem like you have one. Uh, I didn't come up with the name. My brother gave me the name uh, when I was younger and wanted to make music. And oh, wow. He just, well, he was... uh, if we're going by names the brothers give us, I'm, I'm nice to meet you. I'm Faggot, everyone. Uh... <laughs> My older brothers. Never let me forget exactly how gay I was as a little boy. Yeah. All right. Strategy, how long you been DJing for? Uh, it's been, uh, we're coming up on like 12 years now. Okay. Did you know that Hans Kim, you know Hans Kim that was on earlier? Yeah, I do. I actually, I, I'm, I'm in Houston. I'm from Chicago, but I live in Houston now, and I, I just reached out to him to uh, come on the podcast that I got. I know he's DJ Hans Kim. Well, no. He's, he, well, what is it? it DJ Hans Kim. But and then I asked him why it's DJ Hans Kim, and he says it's because he hates DJs more than anything in the world. Can you believe that? I'm going to give him some money, so I feel like... What are you going to give him money for? To come on the podcast. Oh, cool. How much money are you going to give him? I mean, I was going to give him like 200 bucks. How about 400? You think so? Just in case Pang Dang's listening, I just want him to know he's missing out on all these little opportunities. Just little $400 an hour gigs, you know what I mean? I'm kidding. Uh, so strategy, <laughs> 12 years as a DJ. You've done some wild stuff. What's your DJing style? Are you like, uh, are you like more like EDM clubby or are you, you playing the hits of the 90s? Yeah, I'm playing, well, I'm playing like, I'm a nightclub DJ. So I'm playing the hits. I'm mixing in a little bit. Right now, it's, it's more hip hop than anything, mixing in a little bit of house EDM. But I, I do what the manager tells me. I'm, 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 a, I'm a nightclub whore. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I love it. So now you're, you're, you're just doing that. You do like private parties and stuff like that? Anybody yeah, have? yeah. Yeah. You get hired for a lot of those? Yeah, I just did uh, actually an art show with the homies that I'm here with. Okay. You, ha you make all your money just from DJing? I make every dollar that I make from DJing. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty. That's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. Strategy. You, have, uh, you, uh, you were talking about threesomes up here. You have a lot of girlfriends? Not a lot of girlfriends, but probably more threesomes than girlfriends. More threesomes than girlfriends. He's, he's had more threesomes than actually having girlfriends. So he, he, he's oh, a wow. slut. Yeah. You're dirty. yeah. <laughs> he's you're a slut at Club Applebee's or whatever. <laughs> you're a dirty little boy. How many threesomes are we talking about here? Uh, do, do double blowjobs count as a threesome? Double blowjobs. Now, that is, uh, I'm guessing that that is uh, two girls uh, giving you a blowjob at the same time? Yeah. Like, uh, like mouth to mouth? Like, how does that work? Aren't they just really um, taking turns? I mean, it's taking turns. What kind turns. of dick are we talking about? You got like a cactus for a dick that branches off or something like that? You have uh, the old... Uh, one hits the top, one hits the root. Uh, you know, like one works on the top of it and one gets the root. And this man knows. Red Band makes everything disgusting. <laughs> Nothing better than picturing Red Band's stump being kissed by girls. Jesus Christ. 
strategy, what is your definition of a double blowjob? Because Webster's is actually here, and they were looking for the actual definition of a double blowjob. So. I feel like if there's two girls that are willing to touch your penis simultaneously with their mouths, that would be a double blowjob. Simultaneously meaning at the exact same time. Uh, same time, maybe like in transition. All right. And how many times, if you had to guess, do you think this is happening? How many double blowjobs are we talking about? Because, like, you, you're talking about it like you're the Tom Brady of double blowjobs. No, jobs, no, no. It's not that get, serious. I'm just trying to get a feeling, because my guess is two. No, I would say maybe, like, eight, nine. Wow. Oh, my God. That's basically 16 or 18 blowjobs. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Red band. You had to hit me with a clown horn, dude. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, strategy. Tell us something very interesting about you that you think that the fans of the show would want to know. A fun fact about strategy. Um, I have a pair of titties tattooed on my arm. Oh, so. my God. Look at you. You're like the kid from Big. You're like a six-year-old that went to one of those Zoltar machines. <laughs> And got a grown-up body. You're like, I like double blowjobs and boobies. <laughs> this is incredible. What kind of brain injury did you I suffer? Like it. You got real tits on your arm, dude. Real, yeah. I love it. Wow. When did you get that tattoo? Uh, maybe like five years ago. Four, five years ago. All right. I got something you might like. You yeah, know he also <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has tits right. as well. well uh, <laughs> So you know, the, you guys know the slingshot ride where it's like a ride where you get shot up into, and they always record the people like passing out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole porn category of tits that have fallen out of the slingshot ride, oh, and it's always great yeah, because they're yeah. there with their kids, and their kids have no idea their mom's tits are flopping all around. It's Jesus. Should be illegal, Christ. but it's not because they can't see each other. Oh my God. God, what is going on, Red Band? You <laughs> no, have to no, fucking no. Is that stop. A specific, is that a specific tattoo of someone's tits? Yeah. Who's that person? Uh, her name's Jenna. Uh, I would have been more happier if you would have said it was your mother's tits, to be honest with you. That seems like it makes more sense. Then you can get some I, of that mama's milksies. So I got it on the underside of my arm because I didn't really want it to be super visible, but it actually works out really well that somebody could put their head right on top. Oh. And if you take a picture where you cut off the bottom, okay. it just looks like yeah. that person's showing their titties. All right. We're finally figuring out how you make your money. You charge people to take pictures with their head above God. the tits. <laughs> with really big <laughs> HGH heads. Like, like they're going to be like bobbleheads, wouldn't they be? Yeah, yeah. It's a funny picture. <laughs> <laughs> Strategy. I love it, man. You definitely dress like a DJ. You act like a DJ. You do stand up like a DJ. I'm, uh, I'm in it, 100%. Absolutely. I moved to Houston because I was ready to die for the shit during COVID. For wait, what were you ready to die for? DJing. Oh my God, really? 100%. Wow. Well, you technically died on stage tonight, so. <laughs> That's what I came up here for. Stupid strategy. You get a little Kill Tony joke book Hell from the great yeah. Bones Eye, Adrian Cavazos. Thank you. Anything else for strategy? No, we're good. Keep up the good work. I really liked it. He liked it. I William, thought that was pretty good. William loves strategy. That DJ was really PM. good. He's got a special strategy to fix the mic stand there. <laughs> DJ strategy. <laughs> That's silly. Imagine... <laughs> I don't know. What would your DJ name be, Tony? Uh, oh, this is interesting. It would be this guy's name. My DJ name would be. Uh, this guy's currently, uh, yeah, well, we'll talk about it with him. Ladies and gentlemen, Trey Pack is your next comedian. Trey Pack. DJ he Pony. Here he is. This guy, famously part of the weight loss challenge currently happening. Make some noise for Trey Pack, everyone. I woke up this morning and my nipples were hard, which can only mean one thing. It is Girl Scout cookie season time again, ladies and gentlemen. It's here, y'all. Hell yeah. I was trying to walk into the store today and they had the soldiers out there or whatever, the girls <laughs> were out there. You guys laugh, but that's what they call themselves. Uh... The troops or whatever. 
The girls are out there, okay? And the troop mom is talking to this little girl, right? The troop mom, she looks up, she sees me. She went back to the little girl, and I read her lips. She said, big spender. <laughs> Fuck that bitch, right? Jesus. It was actually my mom. Uh, here's my thing. I'm all for them teaching these little girls sales tactics, right? Like, that's super cool, right, ladies? Yeah? Yeah. I don't think they have to be so aggressive about it. I don't think you have to be like, hey, Cindy, there's a fucking whale in the water. It's time to be a shark. Let's do this. <laughs> fucking Wolf of Walmart or whatever, bro. Just be cool, okay? Thank you so much, guys. Trey Pack, everybody. Getting in a full minute. Using all of his time yeah. and then some extra. Very good, Trey. Uh, what is your favorite kind of cookie? That's what everybody wants to know. What uh, you... Samoa's. It's the only kind of cookie. Okay. For, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's the only kind. Yep. They're all great. I'm going to be honest with you. It's, yeah. a, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real problem. I took you for more of a not-so-thin mint kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> talking about Girl Scout cookies here. Trey, uh, that is that was an unbelievable minute, thank by you, the way. Thank Congratulations. You, thank you, thank you, really thank you, thank you, thank you. changing the tone here. A lot of first timers and uh, people up here, but you are uh, you're something special. Remind us again how long you've been doing stand up? Uh, consistently about four years. And where are you yeah. from? Knoxville, Tennessee. And now you live here. Yes, sir. And what absolutely. do you do for work? Uh, I, I worked bar security at home, so I'm just kind of trying to figure stand up out right now. So okay, you yeah. worked bar security out. Yeah, in I was Knoxville. a bouncer. Okay, yep. and you saved a bunch of money. Uh, yes, sort of. I guess <laughs> something like How that. How are yeah. you surviving out here if you don't have a job? Uh, I mean, I'm just kind of waiting on Rogan's Club to open. I'm going to go try to door guy. I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you're just basically I'm... hibernating until then, just <laughs> living low. <laughs> Using your reserves. Yeah, I've done some like side security stuff, like some one offs and stuff. What do you like, like to do for fun? What do you, what are, what else about you? Man, I, I do stand up every single day of the week. So what this else? is this is it. Yeah, what uh, else? I, I love I love working as a bouncer. I mean that's really what I mean, I couldn't imagine doing anything else other than this. You love uh, it, huh? I love oh it's it's the most fun job in the world other than this. Okay. You, if you were gonna kick this guy right here out of a bar, uh <laughs> If if he kept uh, if he kept grabbing guys' asses or something like that, like what would you? How would you handle that exactly? I'm just, I'm more of a talker. Well, to yeah. Him. Well, show yeah. us. That's what I'm asking you. What would you say to him? Williams is gonna he's gonna yell at me, and I don't. I'm not. Okay. I'm not bouncing. All right. Real life. real fucking. You you go to UCB or Second City. This is brilliant. What's <laughs> going on right now? Why don't you just fucking try what I'm telling you to do? And then let's okay, see what let's happens. fucking fight, William. Let's go. Okay, that's not how you work. Yeah, I don't think he fucking said that. Jesus Christ. Some of these stand-up comedians, it's so funny. The guy can be hilarious and then not know how to improvise whatsoever. Uh, Tony, if you do that, he's just going to yell at me, and it's going to be hilarious. I don't want to do this. All right, wait. let's go, buddy. Come on, let's get you out of the bar. Let's yeah, go. It's still not working. No, I'm not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you Patrick Swayze them out the door. You just walk them out. It's very simple. What you, does that mean, Patrick Swayze? You slowly die from <laughs> pancreatic cancer? <laughs> oh, fuck you. I've had a rough week, all right? <laughs> Trey Pack. I loved it. Is there ever been a time where you're bouncing somebody out and things go awry? I broke this kid's dick one time. You broke a dick? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Hell Was he yeah. getting a double blowjob at the time? <laughs> No, man, he, uh, he was, so we had like a porch and like an upstairs porch or whatever, a balcony or whatever, and he was pissing off the, off the balcony and I caught him and I was like, hey, fucking quit or whatever, right? Uh -huh. And he flipped me off, so I was pissed off and offended. Right. So I went up, went to yank him out of the bar, got him downstairs, was getting him to the door, and somewhere in the mix, his dick had gotten hard and I don't know what that was about. Are you serious? I swear, hey, I swear to God. And, the, and I it, had was, him, it was out, and it was hard. Yeah. Or it's I, in his pants. No, it was out. It, I had no idea. So I this just guy was peeing with a boner? No, I think he got the boner in the mix. Uh, so I, I don't know. Again, that's between him and Jesus. I don't know. Wow. That's. <laughs> so he, I, I had him in like a full Nelson. He kept trying to bite me, which was weird. Wait, uh, you had him, he's hard as a rock, and yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you are yeah. behind him with your arms. For those of you that don't know what a full Nelson is, it's basically uh, what you wouldn't want to do to a guy that's hard as a rock. Oh, you, uh, 
You put your arms behind his arms, and then you can really get the back motion in there, right? A full I'm, Nelson. I'm just happy he's in front of me and not facing me. Uh, but no, he. so then he looked at me, and he spit in my ear. Uh, Why? I mean, technically, yeah. I don't think his boner, the way you're built, uh, if you guys were face-to-face oh, yeah. face and you bear-hugged him with your belly, I think I don't, I don't think he'd hit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you sure it was spit? I don't want his dick touching me anywhere. All right, so how'd you break his dick? So he's hard. He spits in my ear. I get pissed off, and I, it was like this high, and I like just kicked his feet out from under him and threw him on his chest, but he hit dick first. Oh, shit. And that shit was like, I mean, it was crooked. It was, it was crooked as fuck, dude. I mean, it was, it was something. Dick first. <laughs> Thank you. Holy shit, the new stand-up special by Trey Pack, Dick First. <laughs> so this guy lands Dick First, and then, then, then what happens? He just starts crying for his life? No, so the cops show up, and like, the, I, to add, yeah, because that's you have to, if you break the someone's dick. cops come, and they yeah. just put their fucking knee on it for eight minutes or whatever <laughs> like that. Something. Oh, that Trying to end this guy's boner. Right. Did, did he immediately get soft? No, he put it back in his pants, and when the cops come, he was like, this fat ass broke my dick, dude. Like what? And they arrested the guy. He's an idiot. So was his dick like crooked, like having like an elbow? It looked like my finger. Yeah. I mean, it was broken as god. fuck. Wow. Yeah. Oh it my god. Really, yeah. And you saw it before. It wasn't broken before. Uh, he he claimed that I broke it. So <laughs> it could have been like an insurance claim situation, but he said I broke it. Wow. I mean, that's what anybody with a broken dick would say, though. They would <laughs> want to get that shit covered. That is absolutely incredible. Uh, I love it. William, what do you think about this guy? I loved it. Thank you. It was very funny. I love you, man. And go Vols. I got my Tennessee shirt on tonight. Trey, we did a thing last week. We weighed you in. You you and uh, uh, Sam Hunter are currently in uh, just out of the kindness of our hearts in a weight (laughs) loss challenge uh, because we pulled two obnoxiously fat people out of the bucket back to back on an episode a couple weeks ago. Um, ha- it's been a week since your yeah. weigh-in. R- remind these people what you weighed in at. I weighed in at 398. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, and uh, how do you think it's going so far? I weighed in this morning, and I'm down to 382, ladies Whoa! and gentlemen. Whoa! Nice. Wow. You're losing six, 16 what? pounds a week. What's your secret? What do you do? Get food poisoning? What? It's just starvation. No, I, I literally just stopped drinking like a two two liters of Mountain Dew a day. It's really oh, easy. It's wow. not, it's not yeah. that crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirsty. Wow. It's probably diabetes, but who knows? God damn. Out there just yeah. fucking breaking dicks and <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Trey, fun times. I'm excited so to much, see man. how the whole thing goes. Yeah. Congratulations. Sure. Sixteen pounds lighter mm-hmm. in one week. <laughs> Trey, do you already have a joke book? You already have one of these. No? There you go. You deserve it. A big one from Bonsai. Check out his books. They are... Uh, follow him on Instagram at Bonsai. B-O-N-E-Z-E-Y-E. And you can buy a book from him. Just ask him. Yeah, he makes custom books. Awesome. Yep. All right. Arash Tajia. Arash Tajin or Tajil. Really could be a lot of things at the end here. A rash or a rash. Here it is. A rash tajila. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, my name is Arash. Um, I moved to the United States when I was uh, 2001, which is. Yeah. Uh, that's. Uh, didn't finish the joke. All right, that's just. <laughs> Uh, yeah, great time to come to the United States. Great time. I moved to Utah in 2001. Good decision. Uh, yeah, we came here in April, and I was like, this is the greatest country I've ever seen. Then a few months later, it's like, all right, I'm going to have a bad childhood, actually. This is going to be rough. Yeah, and then Bush got reelected. I'm like, more bullying. Okay, this is going to be bad. Like, nobody was more happy about Colin Powell dying than me. I shed a tear. I was like, you know how many fucking wedgies I got? Fucking Fallujah back there. It's terrible. Uh, so anyway, rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Um, well, glad it ended here at a open mic. Uh, I'll just end it there. Thanks. Okay, 58 seconds from Arash. Am I saying that right? Yeah, um, Arash, yeah. 
Arash. Yeah. Okay. What kind of Middle Eastern are you exactly? I'm uh, from Iran. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's a good one. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. No, no, we're not We're not that, yeah. Yeah, that's what they all say, though. Uh, I would say uh, that's more Pakistani, the beeping. Or yeah, Saudi yeah. Arabian. It all really yeah, all yeah. works, all your neighboring countries. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Arash, tell us uh, more about you. What do your parents do for work? What, oh. Um, how did, did they come here with you, or did they, like... Yeah, we all just moved as a unit. Like, we, we, we moved a lot. Like, they're, like, um, they're uh, chemists. So, uh, yeah, we, they were students. Jesus, Iranian chemists. I know, yeah, God. dude, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad that sounded until now. That's really yeah, bad. Uh, frightening. This they're is a, nice literally our worst nightmares. Yeah. Uh, I should not have said my name here. This is a bad <laughs> idea. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah but we, uh, there were students. So like, we moved to like Turkey, and we went to Australia. Then we came here. So there's a lot of moving. Okay. Yeah. All right. And how about you? How old are you? I'm 28. What do you yeah. do for work? Uh, I'm a programmer, which yeah. is also very typical. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, yeah. Uh-huh. What are you programming exactly? Oh, I work in uh, video games. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. nice. Yeah. Any that. fun ones? I can't say. I have like NDAs, you know. Oh, I yeah. Can't, yeah. Of course. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, a, that's good. Then you're in it. You're in it yeah. to win it. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about five years. Five years? Yeah. Wow. And you've know. been doing it all here in Austin? Uh, no, I just moved here. I was in Salt Lake City, Utah. So yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was real. You really lived in Salt Lake City. Why? Why yeah. there? <laughs> well, my dad got a job, so it was like, we got to go. And then I thought we were going to go to like, because when you don't live here, it's like you think America is just like LA and New York. And so I thought it was going to be those two. And then we just showed up to like the desert. So yeah, it kind of sucked. It was not Felt fun. like home, huh? It. Actually, yes. It's it's the exact same climate as Tehran, which is yeah, it's oh, nice. Well, there yeah. you go. There yeah, you go. no Muslims. What do you like though. to do yeah. for fun? What are you into when you're not playing Dude, video games or doing stand up? Uh, pathetically, this I have no. I mean, I have a girlfriend, so that's nice. So yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. What ethnicity is she? She's also Iranian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, found dude. her in Salt Lake City? Jesus Christ! No, she's from uh, she's from Texas. Yeah. Oh. It's like yeah, you're you're not gonna find anyone in Utah. There's this just. Oh, wow. It's bad. No offense to white people or anything, but yeah, it's not, yeah. But it's not the same, <laughs> yeah. That's but interesting. They can't match. So you found an Iranian. What are Iranians, like, known for? What do you guys, other than, uh, uh, I'm guessing, a lot of pubic hair, what they're else? Like, uh, Belly dancing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nice when someone matches, you know, it's cool. Um, but, like, I would say we're, like, Latino adjacent, so it's, like, if you've dated uh, Mexican, probably the same thing, so, yeah. But... <laughs> Really? Yeah, like I, I used to date Mexicans as like off brand, so I was like, all right, I'll go for a yeah. Wow. It's like okay. It's like now we're getting somewhere. Eighty percent of the way there. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. That'll hold you over for a little bit, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, ex exactly. That's that's why I moved here. It's like I gotta, I can't do it anymore. Oh so, yeah. 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 You guys, but they both like pita or something like that. Right? Yeah, we we got our own bread. It's like yeah. every, everyone thinks they invented the same shit. Like there's like eight euros and shawarma. What does she do? What does your Iranian girlfriend do? Oh, dude, she's a dentist. She's very accomplished. She's oh, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. All right. Look at you out there drilling a dentist for a change. Sorry for her. <laughs> Uh, Damn it! I I don't I never came up with that joke either. That's really yeah, good. That's, wow. yeah, that's really good. How long have you been with her? Oh, not that long. Like five, five months. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Have you, you, she ever let you sit in the dentist chair and give you a double blowjob or anything like that? No, I mean I'm just not as cool as a DJ, dude. I, we just don't get that kind of puss. What kind of music program. do you like to listen to? Uh, honestly, like. I go from like hip hop to just like Middle Easterny songs. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Do you have any favorite? <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <laughs> you have any favorite uh, Middle Eastern artists coming up, like Keith Turbin or anything like that? Or it's like that's the thing. It's like I don't know. I mean, like Where's I the lighting guy yeah. on that one, huh? Yeah. I gotta say, like, uh, yo, you know who's good? Um, Omar Suleiman is really good. If you like, like, dancey music, you should check him out. It's Will good. you do a little Middle Eastern dance for us? How many of you think we should do, have this guy do a little Middle uh, Eastern dance? <laughs> Here it is. I feel like this is already really humiliating. I don't need more. Uh, yeah. No, we're gonna have you I, dance. Okay. Or I don't wanna. Decision. If it's cool, if I could not dance, that'd be nice. Do you dance? Yeah. Do you know how to dance? No, I don't dance at what all. What do you I mean, know how to do? Let's have you do something. You know how to do like a magic trick or anything like uh, that. I mean, these all sound very uh, stereotypical. <laughs> there we go. No. Um, 
Just, oh shit, dude. They want it. Dance. Whoa, the lighting guy's in on it. I you can't. can basically do anything right now, and the crowd will go wild. I just feel like the only Persian guys who dance like get kicked out of clubs and wear, like, wear a lot of cologne just kind of suck. So I can't be like those guys. It's All just... Right, well. yeah. Jesus, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's already embarrassing that I do comedy. I can't do dancing on top of that. You know, hmm. It's not... All right. Yeah, no, no. Sorry. He's, he's not <laughs> Egyptian. All right, all right. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. It's not Egyptian at all. No, right, no, I, a total, oh, for fuck's sake, total different country. No, I love it. Yeah. Uh, you close with your parents? What do they say about you doing stand-up comedy? Uh, and not being able to I dance? just don't tell them anything, and yeah, it goes well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they don't. Go. I mean, the they vaguely know, but all right. they're happy I have a day job. I think that's. What's the longest set you've done before? Oh, I mean, an hour. Yeah, hour. Wow. Yeah, I'd love to have you on the Secret Show Thursday. Maybe. Oh, Whoa, shit. Well, thank look you. at that! Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks, Here you go. Take a joke, Buck. Arash Tajiri, everybody. Very exciting. Just got a real stand-up gig out of it. William, how do you feel about that guy? I know you're not big on... Um, <laughs> I'm big on what? <laughs> on immigrants. No, I'm kidding. Not, yeah, historically I'm not. I think he could have just stopped his set at the beginning with the... Uh, uh, I moved here in 2001. That was the funniest part. That's true. It all went hilarious. downhill from there. Much like the World Trade Centers did because of those types of people. Gabe K is the next comedian here on Kill Tony. Gabe K, live in Austin, Texas. Here he is. What's up, everybody? So I, uh, believe it or not, was raised Christian. Uh, not like a little bit, like super Christian. Uh, my dad was a pastor. His dad was a pastor. I was actually a pastor for a little while myself. And gone a slightly different direction since then. So I don't have a lot of fond memories of that time. But one thing that was a lot of fun for a young pastor's kid was church girls. Um, uh, listen, if you never had a rushed, paranoid, guilt-ridden hand job in the back of youth room on Wednesday night, you missed out, my friend. And if you were any kind of bad guy, you became like their own personal project. And the more your soul was in danger, the nastier the shit that they would do. Um, listen, until you've had a girl suck your dick like your salvation is on the line, <laughs> You haven't lived. It's a real uh, come to Jesus moment. All right. Gabe K, talking about Christianity. Mm -hmm. I love it. Makes sense. You look like fat Jesus. Oh, you son of a bitch. You, you look like what? the crucifix wouldn't be able to hold you up there. You know, you know. The only holes on your hands have been donut holes. Uh, you look like you turn everything into God bread and it. wine. How fucking many do you have? Son were you going to get me back? Was that what I yeah. noticed? It looked like yeah. you were loading up for one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. You got yeah, one no, no, on me? Look, Come on. You have yeah, to you, prepare. You look, Go ahead. Um, you look like... That. Somebody's puppet, you faggot? Come on. No. You son of a bitch. You look like that frat boy character in every early 2000s movie that would beat up the gay kid. I look like a frat end, boy and you look like a fat boy. What are we doing he would, here? You don't, wanna, end, you don't want to try to roast me back. You don't roast me dick. back. You that's... can't do that. Look, you have D-Madness leaving now. He's disappointed. I walked fucking D-Madness. He thinks the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, D-Madness. <laughs> all right, up. Gabe K., uh, remind us all. You've been doing stand-up for how long? Two years. Two years. All of it here in Austin, Texas? Uh, no, I did some in California. You, uh, do you, have you, you moved here? <laughs> I broke him. Yeah, from San Jose. Yeah, what am I, a couch? You broke me for a second. Uh, San Jose. But now you live here. Yeah. Right. With your, uh, you still, uh, you were having a, you were in a, uh, you and your wife let a lady in, join your relationship. Yeah, yeah. We, it, we broke it off with that girl, but we're talking to a couple other girls. Wow, look yeah. at you. I didn't realize this is like the new thing. Disgusting is the new hot yeah, or something it, like that. In. I can't believe yeah. that there's girls just lining up mm -hmm. to uh, 
Where do you find these you. girls? Like, is this like a Craigslist thing, or is this like you go to well, JC back, Penney's? Back no, there's apps for it. There's apps for everything. Hell yo. yeah! What is it? Fucking three fun. What is it? Three fun. Really? Yeah. It's, the yeah. number three it's, and the word fun. Yeah, right on the nose. Yeah. And you can find three sums. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever gotten a... I have to ask. I know everyone knows where I'm going with this, but uh, we all learned about the double blow job for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, it's good shit. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know about oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Can, can you even see them when they're doing it? Doesn't it just look no. like... I do. I have my phone, and I oh, okay. Hell record yeah. it. Yeah. Get a little selfie stick yeah. down there. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Gabe, what do you do for work? Uh, this. You do stand-up... Full time. Full time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How do you? Okay. Two years at stand up comedy. So how are you making money doing it? Uh, I'm not making a lot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> my, wa- my how, wife, do you, how do you make a little bit of money? My wife makes fucking money. Okay. What? That's my wife makes money. Oh, okay. What does she do? She's an engineer. She's an engineer. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We see where's the pants in this fucking relationship. <laughs> You're at your dress like a giant baby. I love it. You seem comfortable, though. Are you comfortable? Yeah, yeah very much. Yeah. You seem like the most comfortable comedian on stage all yeah. night. You seem super fucking cozy. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love this. Um, all right. Well, tell us something else. What else haven't we talked about? You've been on the show a bunch of times before, months ago. And uh, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. Any new developments in life? I got COVID. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. Wow. It was fun. Okay. It was my second time. What were your it symptoms? Was... Uh, I couldn't smell that. I, I did lose my smell. And, okay. But I did the antibody shit, and it fucking kills it. What do you do exactly? Huh? R- the, pretend like you're Joe Rogan and rattle off the well, things like, that... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to the Looks like you did extra pancakes and waffles or something like that. Son of a bitch, you son of a bitch. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mostly, yeah, mostly that, pancakes. All right. Has anyone ever told you that you look like if uh, Jason Momoa was a bloated corpse on a river? Uh, like if he drowned and was found months later. Yeah. That's what you look like. I'm just trying to describe it for D Madness. He hasn't been here. He, he's always wondering what the people look like. So this is my way. It's, <laughs> you're welcome, D. I love it. Well, all right. We're doing it here. Anything else, Gabe? William, what do you think about this fucking guy? He's up here. When you said your wife was an engineer, I was picturing her being a train engineer. <laughs> but you're talking about like somebody that like builds bridges and stuff. Yeah, she wears the hat. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, I pictured train engineer. Mm-hmm. What kind of engineer is she? Industrial. Oh, okay. Yeah, she works for Google. Uh, she works for somewhere. Okay, there you go. All right. Like, what's, like, the last gig you did where you made money doing stand-up? What was that like? Um, I, it was, like, a month ago uh-huh. in Pflugerville. Okay. Yeah. Hell, yeah. That's Red Band's yeah. territory. Oh, yeah. Red Band set up shop in old Pflugerville, everyone. Yeah. Nothing more exciting than a 30-minute <laughs> drive home. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that where you live, Pflugerville? No, I live further than Pflugerville. Further north? Yeah. How far north? Like an hour. Wow. What's Jeez. the name of your city? Belton. Belton. Yeah. Hell yeah. So if I go to Three Fun and I see someone's in Belton, I'm going to know that it's you. I'm going to come up there and fucking suck your cock. How about that? <laughs> Kidding. I don't know what's going on here tonight. I'm an animal tonight. All right. Make some noise for Gabe K, everyone. Gabe, do you have a joke book yet? You do. Okay. There you go. All right, we're having fun here. You know we're the, gonna keep you, flying through it. You, you know the real big guy that that was just up. He uh, got out of his car and he hit my car, and my alarm went off, and it said my car was broken into, but it was just as big ass. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. There you go, Reevee Wonder. Reevee Wonder. That's a cool name. I have I have high hopes for this one. Everybody, clap your hands for Reevee Wonder. These people. I know we're getting later in the show, but these. These people, they wait. Here we go. This is Reevee Wonder. One more time for Reevee, everybody. What's up, y'all? What's up? How y'all feeling? Uh, I was raised by a single mother, so um, I felt like I picked up some, uh, some feminine qualities on accident. 
Uh, I had to jump to put these pants on today. <laughs> that, that's not a joke. I, I really did. Uh, um, I'm really nervous, so I forgot the next one. Uh, um, uh, I, oh, yeah, actually, uh, I put my, uh, my hair up in a towel as well when I get out of the shower. Um, I, uh, I say yes, queen, after drinking a little bit of wine and taking pictures. <laughs> I get a little excited when I see, like, another girl with a really cute outfit on. I don't know, it just kind of gets me going a little bit. Uh, thanks, I'll stop. There you go, Reevee Wonder. Fuck yeah. This is very exciting. Very rarely do we have someone that looks like both Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love at the same time, so it's wild. This is what could be their long-lost child or something like that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at you, Reevee. I'm super excited to be here, man. I'm a big fan. I love it. Well, welcome, welcome. This is amazing. We were both raised by single moms, you and I. I could tell because you have her haircut, obviously. (laughs) It's oddly similar. It's oddly similar. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, This is my third time. Third time ever. Third time ever. And already one of the funniest female stand-up comedians in the world. (laughs) Absolutely incredible. Uh, So what what do you do for work? What H-E-B do you work at exactly? I got to (laughs) know. Oh, man. Uh, I uh, I do roofing right now. I'm a project manager for a roofing company. Really? You're roofing? Yeah. I used to do photography before the the pandemic, but uh, it was just mostly event coverage. You look more like a photographer than a roofer, I'll tell you that. Thank you. I appreciate that. that. Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, What do you like to do for fun? You have a fun name, Reevee Wonder. I imagine you uh, you, you have have some something. I, uh, I, uh, I race motorcycles and uh, dirt, bi- er, dirt bikes and mountain bikes in my free time. Whoa, really? Yeah. Wow. How long have nice. you been doing that for? Uh, about two and a half, three years now. Uh, I grew up riding and uh, something got me out of it at a certain point. And, what got you out of it? Uh, well, I never really took it seriously beforehand. So I guess um, friends that just like wanted to do nothing but drink and like I still drink, but I like right. to go do other shit too. So. Yeah. How often do you drink? Are we a heavy drinker? Uh. I was when I bartended. Uh, I bartended for a little bit and um, okay. got a little bit out of hand with it. I did mm-hmm. uh, did Sober October last year and uh, went a little bit longer uh, into it. And it was cool, but then I like fucking tequila, so. Absolutely. <laughs> if, you, if you like fucking tequila, you'd really love drinking it. I mean, uh, burns your dick if you just fuck it. All right. Stupid. Uh, William, what do you think about this guy? I think you need to be fucking careful on those motorcycles. I'm serious. William's concerned about your... Whoa, Whoa, what's that? that? Did you already get in a crash? Yeah, yeah, I broke my arm earlier this year. Oh, Oh. shit. Uh, Wow. And that was just a one-man accident? One vehicle? Fortunately, yeah. You didn't run into anybody? didn't anybody else out. All right. You have a girlfriend? Uh, I... It's not official, but it, it might as well be. Whoa. Wow, that's a, the most adorable answer I've ever heard in my goddamn life. How long you been hanging out with this chick? Um, on and off for probably like three years. She used to live in New York. and Three years? Back. But you don't know if that's your girlfriend? What the fuck? Are you waiting for her to turn 18? What's going on here? <laughs> that's a good, good point, Red Band. Very good. Red Band knows from experience that that's the only reason you wouldn't say your girlfriend. <laughs> wow. Three um, years and you really don't know? What makes you say you don't know? Uh, uh, well, well, I know now. Uh, it was just uh, she wasn't into it at first. Uh, it was just kind Being of called a girlfriend? <laughs> Wait, she wasn't into what at first? Uh, it was just casual. She didn't want it to be, um, you know, uh, anything more than that. She lived in New York and I live in Georgia. Um, so she finally moved back. That's her hometown. And... Uh, how often else. do you talk to her? Uh, every day. Every day? Yeah. I mean, she lives in Georgia now, so. But you guys don't, uh, you don't know if she would consider herself your girlfriend? Oh, no, she would, for sure. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I just haven't, like, asked her, hey, hey, hey you want to be my girlfriend? So. Well, <laughs> what, how many of you think you should call her right now and ask her? <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Long distance call to Georgia. Let's get that phone unlocked from our friends here at Yonder. The, uh, the lock up your phone bag company, Yonder. 
Not an official sponsor, but if we keep saying their name like that, they will be. Here it is, the Yonder Unlocker. Here you go. Here's the Fat Lebowski Man. to unlock it for That's you. That's a Yonder Wizard right there. My goodness, look at that fucking bag of brisket right there. Jesus Christ, dude. It's even dressed like mustard. Incredible. All right. You calling her? You got to yeah, put the yeah. end up, the speaker, volume all the way up. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm on Kill Tony right now. Uh... Oh, my God. Ask her. Ask her the question. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess, a little long overdue, but uh, do you want to make things like Facebook official? <laughs> oh, my God. Is this for real? <laughs> you better ask her if she wants to be your girlfriend before... Uh... Uh, so uh, the topic of me and you came up on the show, and uh, I was calling to see if you wanted, uh, wanted to be my girlfriend. <laughs> Let's do it. Wow, look at that. Dreams are coming true. Three years. Three years people have been wondering when this day would come. And that call to Georgia makes it official. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I'll call you after. Love you, bye. <laughs> All right. He hung up real quick. He could tell I was thinking of another question. I was going to ask if there's anything weird about his penis. That was going to be my question to her. Reedy, how does that make you feel? You have a girlfriend. And by the looks of you, I think she has a girlfriend as well. This is very exciting. You guys are girlfriend and girlfriend. I love it. Who has longer hair? Her? Uh, right now, her. I actually just cut it. Used okay, to wow. Yeah. Look at you. Fuck so. yeah. You really do ride dirt bikes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Reeby. Well, you were fun, man. Congratulations. You've done stand up. This is your third time Thank ever. You. I don't know. What do you guys think of his set? I don't even remember. Thank you. Thank you. How was his set? Reevy, here, take one of these. Keep going that way. Go that way. Right there. All right. I'm going to pull another name out. Let's see what happens here. Mike Ivy. You guys having fun out there? Mike Ivy is next. Here he comes. He's got a steady pace coming to the stage. All right. One more time for Mike Ivy, everyone. Okay. Hey, how's it going? Hey. I'm a weird black guy. <sighs> like I like Wu-Tang Clan and Japanese animation. <laughs> Big fan of that stuff. Uh, my favorite television show of all time is a little show called Game of Thrones. You ever seen Game of Thrones? <laughs> Out there, a couple of nerds, okay. If you haven't seen it, it's a show with swords and dragons and stuff. I'm kind of a nerdy guy, so I end up like doing it in public. I'll quote the show. I'll be like, we die today, brothers. We die bleeding from a hundred wounds with arrows in our necks and spears in our guts. But our war cries will echo throughout eternity. They will sing about the Battle of Winterfell until the Iron Islands have slipped beneath the waves. Every man, woman, and child will know who we were and how long we stood. Ironborn warriors will scream out our names as we leap over the walls of Sea God and Fair Castle. That's usually when they kick me out of H-E-B. They're like, you can't do this. Post, post 9-11. All right, that's it. Mike Ivey, absolutely. Thanks. Very good. Hell yeah. Wow. Thanks. Powerful. You did it. How's it going, Mike? You've been on this show before, right? No, I actually haven't. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, welcome. How long have you been doing stand-up? <laughs> About 14 years. Wow. Really? 14 years. Incredible. Are you Leslie Jones? Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so I love it. 14 years. All of it here in Texas? Where you been doing that at? Cleveland. 
Cleveland, Ohio, yeah. the home of hilarities. Home of hilarities. Is My that, home club. That's your home club. Absolutely. I, I've been we on that stage more than anyone else. Really? Yep. Is that true? It's absolutely true. Wow, that's so cool. So it's too much. It's I love it. No, I love it. We <laughs> love that place. It's incredible. It they is make, great. They have they good have, food. Yeah, good food. Great yeah, pasta yeah. back there. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, how long have you lived in Austin? About three weeks. Three weeks. Wow. And you already have a good H-E-B reference. Look at that. You know yeah. what's up, dude. You know the, the quickest way to people's hearts. You know what it is. You got to pander. You know what it is. Absolutely. You got to pander. You know, you know who really likes pandering? The great state of Texas. All right. All right. Uh, I love it. You really are a weird black guy. Uh, <laughs> yes. He That's said true. it first. Yes. He said it first. I feel like you've cosplayed before. What's your character that you played? <laughs> that is true. Which Power Ranger are you? Uh, <laughs> the green one, of course. I mean, the coolest one. Have the green you, Ranger. Have you dressed up as things? Um, the only thing I've really done, I was a Jehovah's Witness when I was a kid, so I never did Halloween. Uh, I did Scary Spice in a talent show. Ah. Yeah. Damn, Jehovah's Witness, huh? Yeah, when we were kids, for a little bit. It got a little culty. Like, my mom, was, she, she was really into Jesus, but she was also black, so it was like it was too much. Like, they were good with the Jesus, but then too much with the, hey, how about your business? What's going on? Right. Yeah, so. Right. Yeah. Normally, people that look like you are, that are a witness, it's in a courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant defendant. I'm sorry. I said <laughs> the wrong thing. Just kidding. You get it. You are a weird black guy. You're wearing a fila. Is that a fila? Like, shirt? Fila's back. Fila's back. I'm saying it right now. Italia. Yeah, you know. Italy, man. And the bandana around your neck. What's going on there exactly? Um, so during the pandemic when they wanted to put masks on, I hate government shit. Like I was into punk rock when I was right. a kid. I was into real hip hop. I okay. like looking like a ninja. Oh. Okay. I like looking like a ninja, so I'm cool with that. I can All right. Blazing saddles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Occupy Wall Street, something like that. <laughs> All right, Mike, what do you like to do for fun? What else? Tell us some interesting shit about you. Um, I'm a classically trained chef. Oh, yeah. wow. I can make all that shit. Okay. All of it, anything. I make pizza by hand. I do all that shit. Damn, yeah. really? Yeah. What got you into that? Um, I loved eating. Seriously, when I started as a kid, I loved eating. So I was like, why don't I try to become a chef? And that's the wrong way to do it, by the way. What's so your one meal? What's your one thing you're proud of that you'd like make? Yeah, what's your specialty? I make a f uh, authentic Chinese-style fried rice. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Crispy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You got to use old rice. That's the secret. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's true. All right. They're just trying to throw, throw away old rice, so they fry it, and it's like, oh, this worked. All right, yeah. Let's just sell this to white people. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, what's your love life like? What's going on there? You are a, uh, you seem a little bit nerdy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit nerdy. Um, I'm a serial monogamous, I guess. I had a, lo a relationship with a girl who was smarter than me. She had a doctorate. She's like the world's premier uh, authority on uh, slow lorises. Are you familiar with these animals? On what? Slow lorises. Okay, a couple of people out there. They're like these little mammals that like climb around and they're kind of like sloths, but they're cute and people are trying to like hoard them and shit. So she's like the premier authority. Basically, she broke up with me because she's like, this isn't, you're not going to make any money, are you? Right. So, yeah. So now I'm here in Austin trying to make my money, you know, as a comedian. Cleveland, not the media center of the world, so I don't think it's going to happen there. I figured right. I'd come to the, where, where it's happening, Austin, Texas. This is true. This yeah. is exactly where it is indeed happening. Tell us something weird about you. What's something crazy, a fun fact about your life? There must be something. Uh, I crack my neck about 40 times a day. Oh, okay. Why I is that? I could do yoga. I, well, I, I, I was a cook, so I'm like doing like this. Right. Tall necks fucked up, you know what I mean? Like right. it's bad on your neck. So I have to do yoga in order to uh, keep myself balanced. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wow. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a very rare episode of Black Yoga, everybody. <laughs> you don't very rarely get to see this. Next, he's going to do downward facing cop. Uh, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I can't help myself. I don't know what to. I don't know what to. What type Solid. of Black Yoga jokes can I do? It's a real stretch. There is a lot of crazy shit about me. I've had a lot of, like, uh, let's see, we, we were homeless when we were kids. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, for a while. Um, yeah. Uh, and, but I've turned that into being able to be poor. Yeah. So, like, I'm fucking awesome at being poor. My, I, I bought a salvaged Toyota Scion because all poor people know that Toyotas are good cars, even if they're pieces of shit. Yeah. So I got it $1,500. I drove it down here. 
wow. put a, change a couple of sparks plugs. Like I'm that kind of guy. I'm like the I'm like the black guy that can fix your car by hitting it with a hammer. Yeah, I've become that person now. So wow, yeah. look yeah, at yeah. that wrapping a Toyota Scion. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Scion XB, baby. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Even, even D Madness is like I wouldn't drive a Scion. Uh, <laughs> I would not be seen in that vehicle. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, congratulations, man. Nice Thanks, man. to meet you. Thanks. Uh, great stuff. Come back again. Here's a joke book. Have a big joke book. Fill it up with more great stuff. Woman? All right. What do you guys think? Should we go to this bucket one more time, huh? Oh, yeah. We haven't had a lady yet tonight, huh? Should I keep pulling until I get a woman up here? Ooh, sorry to Zach. Sorry to Sam. Sorry to David. You guys were so close. Cousin Berto. I bet that would have been great. Sorry, Brad, Thomas, Cameron, Chad. Another Gabe, Thomas, Will. Uh, okay, here we go. I got one. You guys ready for this? It's Lauren Jameson, everybody. Lauren Jamison. One more time for Lauren Jamison, everybody. Uh, hey, y'all. Uh, I love how Governor Abbott recently barricaded the Texas border with miles of state trooper vehicles in order to keep the Hadians out. What a dumb idea. It's not like those immigrants aren't going to know how to hotwire those cars. I'm a big Disney fan. I'm really excited about uh, the remakes that are coming out, like Cinderella. This time around, she's going to be a Mexican, which makes sense because she is a maid. <laughs> glass slipper, more like glass cleaner. <laughs> Give Camilla Cabela a bottle of Windex. She'll get that castle spick and span. Okay, fine. Um, Little Mermaid's my favorite, too. All right. She's coming out with a new one. Yeah, this time Ariel's going to be black. (laughs) (laughs) Cover your ears. Cover your ears. I just don't think I'm going to watch it. I'm afraid she might drown. (laughs) No. Oh, God, Lauren Jameson. Almost knocked D. Madness out of his seat by even acknowledging that there's going to be a black aerial. Wow. Couple slurs in there, but who am I to judge? Oh, it's, it's the perfect platform. Lauren, welcome. Welcome to the show. Have you been on before? I have. In L.A.? San Diego. Okay. The All whales right. he he. Yeah. Hell yeah. While back. What did I say about you back then? Do you remember any of the things that I made fun of you about? Did I tell you that you look like the corpse of John Benet Ramsey? That is amazing. You should use that on I yourself. Mean, that would be my opening joke if I was you. I can finally close that case. I love it. Do you remember anything that I said where I made fun of you in you San Diego? You know, it's, it's funny that Mike was talking about Game of Thrones because it was actually the Sunday. It was that. It was the finale. Of I remember Game of Thrones. that. I remember driving so I home you. from San Diego very fast that day in my Corvette. I made it there in like <laughs> forty-five minutes. For those of you that know, the drive from San Diego to LA shouldn't be that short oh. at all. But I made it. I remember wow. being twenty minutes in and passing up Disneyland and being like, "Wow, Life in we're the doing fast this. Lane. This is what traveling at one hundred and twenty miles." per hour is this is exciting I didn't want to miss it yeah I I missed it for you like in real time I came to you know line up with the comics to do Kill Tony and I was the only girl I got picked that night I was yeah it was a good one there you go I came back to redeem myself don't look it up anybody oh (laughs) you buried in the archives you bombed harder than you did here tonight oh boy (laughs) was that redemption (laughs) that was not a bomb we're just kidding Lauren how long you been doing stand up are you smoking a cig in here is that allowed? Yeah. We are back in Texas. I just moved from California. So Lauren, I like why don't you take your liberal mentality? No! And, uh, I love it. Give me one. This is Texas, where it is a state law that artists are allowed to perform on it. stage. I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston. Well, then you should know better. I was just surprised. I know. 
Yeah, because we're on stage, we're allowed to because we're doing like a play. Okay. How long you been doing stand up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the monologue earlier. That was beautiful. Very Shakespearean. Four years? Four years? Okay, yeah. what do you do for work? Uh, this and okay. this. Come on. What, what, are, what are you people lying about? I'm tonight? really not. You I'm, make a living doing stand up comedy. I do. I'm still living off the government, but <laughs> fun employment. All right, so that's the answer. No, I walk dogs. I do. I take care of some animals. Okay. The day. Yeah. All right. Of how other long, comedians. How long have you been doing that for? A uh, few months. I've only been in Austin five, four or five months now. Okay. Yeah. What do you love about Austin? Uh, well, essentially, I'm back home in my home state, so that's nice. I yeah. see family from time to time, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know, just different change. I lived in Mexico for last year. I fled California to oh, get the wow. fuck out of Dodge. Mexico? What was? Yeah. How was that? What? I could do comedy down there, so that was a bonus. Really? Mm-hmm. They didn't give a shit. It's kind of <laughs> like Texas. Pandemic didn't happen. <laughs> So it was just normal life down there the whole time? It was, yeah. Like a big day in the life was like going to the Costco. Uh, and they thought I was Miley Cyrus down there. You put a cowboy hat on and pigtails. They're like, oh, it's Miley. Oh, my God. She's so... What was your living situation in Mexico? You're unemployed living off the government cheese. So uh, what do you have there? Your own castle or something like that? Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. I, I was essentially a white maid living in Mexico. Oh. Doing, yeah, manual labor to earn my room and board. Wait, you were cleaning up. You went to yes. Mexico and you were cleaning Joke's up on me. after Mexicans. Yeah. Wow. No, a Ukrainian family. It was oh. very interesting. Um, a friend of mine runs like a eco-friendly retreat down in La Bufadora, the Boof. Uh-huh. It's where the blowhole is. Okay, tell us something interesting about you. Uh, give us something good, like a juicy part of your life. Like one time um, you did this, and they, they call you this back in wherever because one day you did this. Like, what's that? Wow, that's a lot of movements. Uh, there must I, be something. I picked a guy out of a lineup a couple days ago. It was a bucket list item. I never what done that What was that? Before. What kind of lineup? Uh, was it a rape? For a criminal. No, sadly it wasn't. Not for rape. Yeah. Um, Red band. Weird question. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. No rape. No. Well, it was in uh, Mexico. Where did, where did, what, what happened? A drunken uh, motorcyclist hit my car uh, and fled the scene. Okay. And, yeah, took the license plates, not realizing they could run the VIN. And so they're like, a detective's going to be reaching out to you in a couple of weeks to pick a guy out of a lineup. And I got really excited. I'm like, this is so CSI. Yeah. And I get there, and it was just pictures, sadly. It was like a photographic deal. Right. So I wasn't behind the plate glass. Like, was he wearing a helmet when he ran into your car? No. No, okay. he wasn't. There you um, go. One and more I got him on video. To... So I picked the right guy. Wow. I did. One more reason to wear a helmet, I folks. I can pick a guy out of a lineup, but <laughs> Complete not your hit and run with great friend. success using a motorcycle helmet, everybody. That's what sucks. Can't run They're into dangerous. shit. They're dangerous. Hi, Willie. Hey, how are you? How are you? William, what do you think good. about uh, what do you think about Lauren Jameson? I enjoyed it. We went with her. I don't know if you and Ryan, it sounded like that wasn't going good recently, but I, we, I went with uh, Philadelphia with the, We did some comedy. What about Ryan? Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, what's going on there? It sounds oh, like God. there's a lot of bullshit going on. William, what's even happening? I thought Wait, we were are friends. You, are you guys in a relationship? Uh, I you and de- this Ryan? Divine relationship. William. <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't. I mean, it's not a big awful, deal. Awful yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. This is not the place to come and talk about your personal life, is it? Hmm. Anyway, I came here to uh, tell jokes. Yeah, well, you didn't do that either. Oh, um, wow. I thought Lauren. I heard laughs. <laughs> Lauren. Uh, so you, you currently are like sort of kind of dating a comedian? Is that what I'm getting the impression of here, the Williams? Because William knows him. Yes, he might be in the realm of comedy. Okay. Is he here tonight? I hope not. <laughs> you don't know if the guy that you might be in a relationship with is here tonight? Uh, no, he's definitely not. Okay. He wouldn't be. Okay. No, he definitely wouldn't be. All he right. wouldn't be caught dead here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does that mean exactly? Who the fuck is this Ryan guy? Uh, I'm not going to say. You know who he is. William, don't you is dare. Is it Ryan Joseph? Yes. Oh, my God. Is that the answer? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, he would totally be caught dead here. <laughs> He'd be caught alive here almost every single Monday. Ryan, are you here? No. Not this week, huh? No. <laughs> he's home with COVID, so. Oh, he's an that's what it is. Yeah. Wow. Well, then he might be caught dead here him. next week. Who knows? 
All right, Lauren. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fun times. Congratulations on getting your redemption. Thank you. I appreciate that from you, Tony. Lauren Jamison, everybody. Thanks, Here's a joke book for you, Lauren, so that you remember your redemption. A handmade Kill Tony joke book. I don't know. You guys think we should do one more out of the bucket? Just a quick one. Let's get a quickie up here. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to really dig around here and try to find a good one. Here we go. Swiggy. S Swiggy. Here comes Swiggy, everybody. Your final comedian of the night. Come on. It's the last time you got to do it. Make noise for Swiggy, everybody. Oh, fuck's up. Swiggy. Yo. Yo, I actually went to get a massage a little bit ago. It was like a few months ago. I went to go. It was 160 bucks. It's fucking expensive. I'm like, yo. As soon as the masseuse came out, it dawned on me, you know, like she started to take a robe off, got naked. I'm like, yo, she's probably like a sex slave, like a human trafficker. I'm like, yo, I got to save you, you know, like shit, get your shit together. Let's get you the fuck out of here real quick. You finished jerking me off first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't save her. I just came on her tits. But as I was leaving, she's like, ooh, why you come here? You know, you kind of funny, got a bigger dick, you know, why you come here? I'm like, yo, lady. Not a very good salesperson, are you? If anything, you should be like, Ooh, this is the best pussy. That's where you come to get it. You know, it's the only place to get it. Like, shit, man. Like, bitch trying to make a sale. I don't know. What the fuck? Swiggy. Uh, all right. Okay, here we go. For those of you wondering what would happen if you smoked pot that had fentanyl in it, here we are. <laughs> you get swiggy, everyone. What a special treat you are. Look at hey, you. Man. What the fuck are you, dude? I'm like, I don't know, I ate two hits of acid at 3 o'clock, so I'm chilling right now. Man. What? I ate two hits of LSD at like 3 o'clock. So okay. Or 2.30, I don't know. Hell yeah. Sounds Chill. like an awesome trip. Yeah. Hey. That's, it. That's what happens. Two hits of LSD, you get to wear a tie-dye hoodie over a tie-dye t-shirt. Very rarely do people clash two different types of tie-dye. Even most, even most filthy hippies are like, that's a little bit too much tie-dye. But not here with Swiggy. Swiggy is over the top. I love it. Fuck it, dude. Absolutely. He has a landing strip for a beard. Look at this fucking thing. You're wild, Swiggy. Where are you from? Uh, Philadelphia area. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I get that vibe totally. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for work, Swiggy? What? I work at Terry Black's. Whoa! Holy shit. What the fuck are you doing at Terry Black's, I work dude? cashier. They want me to be like a meat cutter, so they got every now and then I'll cut meat and stuff, but mostly I've just been doing cashiering, but eventually I'll be doing that. Um, wow. How long it, have you worked there? Uh, since like May when I moved down here. How I moved did you from get Philly. a job? You just walked in, applied? Fuck you, yeah, dude. Yo, fuck yeah. Yeah, I walked in there and applied, got that shit, man. It was just gnarly. Just through the application? Yeah, and, like, dude. Like swiggy. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. I told him I'm going to open up my own uh, Swiggy Whites. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> open up the Swiggy Whites. I thought it'd be funny. You know, it's got Terry Blacks, so Swiggy Whites. So got it. <laughs> <laughs> God, that laugh. That laugh is something else. Swiggy, you're so goddamn charismatic. We've had so many fucking glasses of water on this show tonight. I forgot humans could be this alive as you are right now. <laughs> I bet you answer all these questions good. What do you like to do for fun when you're not doing acid? Like, what else? What else about Swiggy? You know, I like smoke weed, like hang out with friends. Uh, Fuck yeah. They you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro. What do you like to do with your friends? What do you guys do? You play laser tag or something like that? No, nah, we just like fuck around, tell jokes, or uh, hang out. I don't know. All right, drunk, absolutely, dude. that makes sense. How old are you? You could be any 33. I just turned 33. So, so 33 I think about that. three years old, cashiering at Terry Black's, two hits of acid deep on a Monday. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and now you live here in Austin, or are you just visiting? 
No, I live here. Yeah, yeah. I just, I moved here in right. uh, May or whatever. Right, that's right. I knew that actually. Yeah. I, I actually that. got a show coming up at the Green J like tomorrow night on a nine o'clock. You have a show coming? Yeah, up? doing ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. It's like the best of Houston. I've never even been to Houston. Somehow I'm on the best of Houston. I don't know. I've never been wow. there. They're lying. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> the scene must be struggling tremendously. Swaggy. Oh shit! There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> Tony, how did you... He opened up his set by saying Swiggy, and I leaned over to Red Band in the middle of it, and I said that he's going to say Swiggy after all of his punchlines. I didn't know you were only going to do one punchline. You called that shit. I did, and here's how I know is because I I started with a guy that has the exact same energy that you have, Swiggy. His name, I swear to God, was Skeezy. Skeezy. And he would literally go on stage and say, Skeezy. And the audience would be like, what? Like, they'd start laughing because why the fuck would anyone do that? And then he would hear a bunch of great jokes. And after each quick, short, great joke, he'd go, Skeezy. And the crowd would lose their shit. It really worked. Have you ever heard of Skeezy, Shane Skeezy? No, I haven't heard of him. Where did you get that then? Why do you say that? Like, did you... Did you I don't know. I've been called Swiggy since I've been like middle school, and then like for a little while I used to rap. My Why one buddy you Swiggy. Uh, my last name is Pearl Swig. Pearl Swig? Yeah, it's Jewish. It's weird. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's one of them kike names, Donna. Wow, Pearl Swig. Your parents must be disappointed as fuck, dude. <laughs> Drop the mic. Held the beer though the whole time, everybody. Fuck yeah, Swiggy. Swiggy. Swiggy, what do your Jewish parents do for a living? That's well, what I've, uh, my dad's Jewish. My mom's like Irish and Catholic. All right, what does uh, your dad do? Uh, my dad, he works for like a painting company in like uh, Philadelphia. Painting? Shaw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about mom? What does she do? Uh, I don't know, man. She like just collecting unemployment or something. I don't know. She's, All right. She's a little crazy. I don't know. I think she's like thinks she's a psychic or something. She's a little she's really. A little, she's a little out there. Yeah. Like, what is she? Has she ever done any psychic readings for you? Like, what has she said? Like, what makes you say? I don't that? know, man. It's weird. I, I think it's all like very weird to me. Huh? <laughs> what's What's your? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Imagine what she says about you. Swiggy, what's your love life like? Does Swiggy have a little piggy at home waiting for him? Nah, I'm pretty single. I was banging this chick that was like 48 that was working at the Terry Blacks, but she oh, got Jesus fired. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she got fired years from there. Old. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Wow. This guy, Miguel, that works there, he's like, you took my Victoria from me. I'm like, what? Like, And he was asking me, how much did you pay her? I'm like, I didn't, I didn't pay her shit, man. Like, what the I ain't paying money. Like, yeah, like, yeah. So how did it start with you and this 48-year-old at Terry Black? She just started giving me rides home because I take the bus home from work. So she started giving me rides then. Oh, hell and yeah. She started Getting blowing me swiggy with it. Na-na-na-na-na-na. Gives you a ride home. And there you, you guys are just using fucking barbecue sauce for lube over there. <laughs> Animals, I love it. Why do you say she's forty-eight? Does she seem forty-eight? Did you feel like she, she told me she was forty-eight? Okay, and that's like <laughs> he's got <laughs> he's got Seth Rogen in. I thought she was like fifty-some. I'll eat fifty-seven. Like, no, I'm forty-eight. I'm like, oh, okay. That was it. <laughs> Were you guys, did you guys bang in the car at all? Like, how, how were you guys doing it? Were you, were you taking her back to your place? Dude, she was weird. She was like, you probably don't want me to be seen with you. Like, oh, I'm like, I don't know. Like, she's like, oh, I'm 48. Yeah, I went over her house. She's like, we got to go out to this crowbar. Like, oh, we go out to the crowbar. I'm like, oh, we can just hang out here. It's like, oh, he's, she just want to fuck me. You don't want to go out. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I'll get <laughs> She made you take her to a bar after having yeah. sex with her? Yeah. <laughs> Now we went there, yeah. I remember they had like a dude that looked like King Diamond or something and it said like employee of the month. I was yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Did huh? you have sex with her again after having drinks at the crowbar? Yeah. Okay. Before and after. Yeah. And again, I don't know I'm not quite sure that I got a direct answer there. Where exactly did you have sex with her? I had her apartment and then at my place a different time, I don't know. But... Okay. How many roommates do you have? My guess is thirteen. <laughs> I only have one roommate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your roommate do for work? Uh, he works at the bank. 
Wow, look at you. That's weird. The Jewish father works in painting and the roommate works at the bank. Very interesting twist here. It's 2021. Stereotypes no longer exist. Was the, was the chicky bang black? No, nah, I banged a black chick before, but now nah, this chick was white. Have you ever like... noticed? Let me ask you this. Have you ever noticed a difference between having sex with a black woman and a white woman? What's different having sex with a black woman? I mean, I remember one time I was with one and like her weave popped off. That blew me off. And then I thought it was her hair. She was like, Swiggy, really? You thought that was my hair? And it was her guy. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I thought that's why there's so many barbershop movies. What the fuck? Like, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Swiggy, you're a wild man, dude. I fucking love you. You're crazy. What do you have in your pockets? Anything exciting? I feel like you have I one of those like, like little weed. hands that you put on I got your a fingertip. Weed vape pen. No, no. A weed vape pen. Yeah. Look at that. A tie- Absolutely, pal. Go for it. We're all basically in a play right now, so it's okay. Oh shit. William. <laughs> Taking a hit from the little red machine. Oh, what shit. What the fuck was that? That tastes weird. I don't know, man. Got, <laughs> you don't know. DMT off him. It's it's DMT. Uh, <laughs> DMT, William. <laughs> no, there's no DMT in it. No, it's tasty. <laughs> But the Sw- dude I got it from had it on. Swiggy, please <laughs> keep signing up for this show. We absolutely have to get you out of this bucket again. Fuck it! Swiggy! 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 <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Very hard fist bump from Swiggy. Very aggressive fist bump. Ladies and gentlemen, your final comedian of the night. Another regular, everybody. He just flew in today from Los Angeles, California. This is the legendary David Lucas, everybody. Yeah, what's up? Uh, they finally got my dog, R. Kelly, man. R. Kelly is gone. R. Kelly. I knew R. Kelly was going to prison when they uh, brought that gay nigga out to testify. <laughs> he was like, God damn, man. I said I'm fucking guilty, bro. What the fuck? Y'all brought Latrell out? Wait, this is... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I'm not canceling R. Kelly, man. Like, so what? He peed on some bitches, you know? <laughs> Women pee on men and call that shit squirt, you know? <laughs> Why the fuck should I cancel R. Kelly for doing the same shit y'all do to us, you know? Like, nigga, I would sacrifice my mama for the remix to the ignition, you know what I'm mean? like, I'm not canceling no goddamn R. If we cancel R. Kelly, what the fuck are we gonna step in the name of at a wedding? That's what I wanna know. All right, guys, thanks. Hell yeah. Brand new R. Kelly material. Yeah. Hot off the presses with the recent imprisonment of the great R. Kelly. I ain't seen you in like three weeks, bro. You got rid of that cowboy shit. No, I'm just taking the night off tonight. Yeah, you came dressed like a gay Harry Potter tonight. Oh. (laughs) Oh, no, you didn't. (laughs) Oh, my God. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Dildo. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) You just put the word dildo in there, and it works. I don't know if you can make fun of people, David. I mean, you're coming in here with the table from Beetlejuice as your haircut. So (laughs) This is where we all sing Jump in the Line from Harry Belafonte. Uh, you, You look like a dick jumping out of a blue tube sock. <laughs> Busting out. <laughs> you know that meme that everybody sends around of the naked black guy with the giant dick? You look like there's four of them sitting on top of your head right now. You look like there are giant, four giant black cocks coming off the top of his head. Did you go to the barber shop and ask him for uh, what Tony wants in his butt per week? <laughs> oh, oh, he flipped the gay joke on himself, yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. Was... He just jujitsued. I said, "Give me four of Sony." Uh, I said, "Give me four of Tony's sex toys." 
But you're the only person who got that black guy saved as your screen lock. That's true. That is my uh, that is my home screen. Is uh, <laughs> my good friend. Yeah, bro. That I love it. What have you been up to? Where you been? Uh, Denver, Brea, uh, 11th through the 13th in November at the Arlington Improv. Okay. Tomorrow with Rogan and Wednesday with Rogan. Oh, nice. Thursday secret show. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm working, on, working. I'm on those shows with you this week. You have pockets on your sleeves. What do you keep in there exactly? What type of, uh, what type of honey bun do you keep in there? <laughs> I keep gay jokes in there for your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's true. No one loves honey buns like I do. Let me pull one out. Honey, honey buns. Tony looked like a gay paralegal. <laughs> <laughs> Objection! No, okay. I love it. You have a little tear in your jeans down yeah, there. You got a little tear in your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three weeks, man. I got some shit on your ass. <laughs> it is true. It has been three weeks. I love it. Yeah, that nigga sipping a, a cosmopolitan. Damn, that must be a black folks drink. What are those? Uh, what, are, what are these shoes that you have? Are these new orthopedics that we're talking about here? These are Travis Scott's, dog. You wouldn't know about this. Man. I love Shoot. it. I, I, I didn't even realize you were wearing shoes. I thought the green was just the diabetes taking over. <laughs> That's the only gang that David's ever been in is gang green. <laughs> Well, those pockets on your sleeves, what are those, hot pockets? <laughs> you got a stripe on your arm for every time you said no when it begins fucking you. <laughs> There'd be a lot more stripes if that was true. I, I like saying man, no. I'm sorry, y'all got to bleep that N-word out. I'm trying, it's been three weeks, I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, uh, we'll get it. We'll put a. We'll, we'll get rid of it. We'll get rid of it. Yeah, hit me again, dog. This shit turned me on. You used to do a. Uh, <laughs> you used to do a podcast with William, famously Brothers in Cursive. Uh, yeah. Launched, helped launch both of your careers. Uh, uh, yeah. William, uh, your brother in Cursive, David Lucas. But is here. Will you- it's so nice to see you. I'm glad of all of your successes. My life is starting to turn into a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad somebody's doing good. Nah, bro, you doing good, dog. You just did, you sold, what, 200 tickets in Philly where you was at? That was a made-up story. <laughs> After you told me all the places you were opening, that I had to make that up. So. Nah, I'm bro, telling you it here we, first. We need somebody to put me and, uh, me and Will on a co-headlining tour. That'll sell out all over America, dog. Yeah, absolutely. That'll sell out, bro. Like, hey, what... Uh, Last time I asked for a manager, I got one. Where an agent at? Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah, that's how it happens. Yeah, that's how it happens. Absolutely. There's probably a big Hollywood agent out there right now. (laughs) I'm gonna make. (laughs) I'm gonna sign the guy with cat poop on his head. (laughs) (laughs) Does look like cat poop. That looks like that looks like (laughs) leopard poop. Yeah, bro. If they'll uh, if they'll sign uh, the stand-in for Woody on Toy Story, they'll sign me. (laughs) No, fuck. Is that a Toy Story joke? Yeah. Hell I said yeah. you was the, the stand-in for Woody on Toy Story. Oh, okay. But is it Woody that you look if like? If you were in Toy Story, you'd be Buzz Heavy Year. <laughs> <laughs> David Lucas and I have been roasting if, each other for years. If you were in Toy Story, you'd be Mr. Potato Head. Because <laughs> you like having <laughs> shit pushed in you. <laughs> You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. God damn it. You got me good. You got me good on that one. I you can't had think a of o- one had- fucking Toy Story character to save my life right now. You had a only uh, Mr. Potato Head with a hole in the ass for you to... <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us can be shaped like the things that uh, don't want to get grabbed in the grab machine in uh, <laughs> Toy Story. That is what you look like right now. You do look like a BT version of Shrek right now. 
<laughs> David, you're the absolute best. Yeah. I'm so glad that you're back in town. Yeah. Just doing shows with Rogan and I all week. The great David Lucas is back, everybody. And that was tonight's amazing episode. Thank you to the Yellow Rose and the Red Rose. And of course, how about another hand for the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band, huh? Matt Muling, Michael Gonzalez, and D Madness. How loud can this place get for our guest and one of my best friends and without a doubt, one of my favorite comedians in the world, William Montgomery, everybody. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah. Another great drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in. Uh, shout out to all of you for coming out tonight. So much fun. Always a pleasure. And uh, be sure to check out CM Smokehouse of Bolden Acres. It's really unbelievable. As well. We're talking about barbecue a lot this episode. So check that out, you local people. And uh, to those of you listening around the world on the internet, thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Shut